So welcome to my presentation of the curl command line variables. We just landed in the code the other day. It is a, a pretty fancy feature, so I'm going to try to explain this um, to you here with a few slides. So hello, I am Daniel. I work for Wolf SSL. I work on curl all day, every day. I'm available on Mastodon. And th this is what I intend to talk about today. So I, I want to talk to you about the concept of uh, config files uh, and how we use them um, today and tomorrow and a little bit about using variables in, in such a config file and how um, this feature introduces a new command line option called dash dash variable and how we set variables using this and uh, work with environment variables and how we expand variables blah blah and uh, you can expand the dash dash variable option and there are a few functions in this uh, that makes it even more exciting and uh, and actually useful i would say and I'll, I'll get into those specific functions for variables in curl so the, i'm doing this uh, as a streamed presentation right so there's a chat room here so if um if you have questions ask them in the chat room or hold them until i'll ask for some questions in, uh, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, anyway, I'll try to monitor the chat and I will respond to questions if, if I can and uh, they seem to be re relevant. So, okay, the config file concept in curl is a long standing concept. We introduced it uh, well over 20 years ago. So it's basically a, a set of command lines in a text file. It's a way for, for yeah, just, put the command lines into a file and, and make curl read the command line uh, the command line options from, from that file instead from instead of the command line. A complicated way to explain it, but uh, it's there. And you write it with one option and it's possible argument per line in the text file. It's pretty straightforward. And curl even tries and uses these default config file if it's there called the dot curl RC. It says uh, here I, I'm using the home envi <laughs> uh, environment variable, uh, but there's actually a, a, an entire sort of path that it tries to find this. So it can actually use it in a few other places as well. Uh, you can check that out in the m in the man page. So basically, you, you tell it with the capital K file name or dash dash config file name, and curl will read command line options from that file and run it. Uh, <coughs> You know, and, and I, I, let me just, sh I can show you this quite easily. So here you see my terminal and here's the curl. So um, if I would have, I could put command lines in, um, command line options in a file that we call config.txt. I will put, let's uh, save the output to a file called output, right? That's the, now the contents, con of the file config.txt and I would use that by dash put capital K config.txt and then a URL right like for example the curl web page so I, if I run this what happens it'll find the command line options to use in the config file and in there it'll see oh well we should save this in the output file and it couldn't save it because there was some problem <coughs> permission denied yeah <laughs> i happen to have a temporary file so anyway that's it it works like that right so i could remove the output file and then i could run it again the same command line and now it works now it saved it so now it didn't fail it saved the, the web page into this file that's of course then the contents of the config.txt and um, you can of course put any and all command line options that are available into this file in, if you just want to <coughs> so um, let's continue on with this config file thing so uh, you can uh, yeah right you can also uh, tell curl to read that config file from standard in instead of a from from a file right which is convenient sometimes because then you can generate that file and pipe it to curl on standard in instead of saving it into a file uh, sometimes 
uh, nice. And there's really, well, there are limits, but I, I know people are doing this and you can then generate a really huge config file, which is also another w reason why s some people, uh, and sometimes you want to use the config file instead of the command line, because uh, a regular command line with a, a typical shell terminal Windows prompt or whatever, usually ha uh, they usually have a restriction on uh, the length uh, and size of how much data you can put into curl on the command line, but um, the config file has a completely different uh, set of limitations, uh, usually much bigger, right? So, for example, the config file now has a 10 megabyte line, line length limit and an unlimited number of lines, so there's really no limit to how many options you can provide uh, and you have a 10 megabyte size, so uh, quite a lot larger than most um, command lines will allow you. So if you have something ridiculously silly large to you want to send to curl, this is a easier way to do it than um, using the command line, sometimes the only way to do it. But okay, the, it, my, my journey into these variable concepts started with it, someone asking that, sure, but I want to sort of pass a I want to use the command, the config file, and I want to pass in variables from the environment, right? Like, I don't want to store my secrets in a file because I want to reuse that file potentially for many users, like the com config file, but I don't want to have the secrets stored in the file because it's one file used by many and I don't want to uh, show the secrets to the world because it's stored in the file. How can I access environment variables? B but yeah, you really can't. I mean, this line here, you see it, it doesn't work like this. So this is not possible and uh, still isn't possible exactly like this, but this is what took me down this path. So if we would just support variables into, add it like that into the config file, we would risk breaking existing config files because someone would possibly use that as is and assume that that just would work like before, right? We cannot just introduce suddenly reading new, f uh, I mean, uh, putting new meanings to old uh, data or old context. So we have to introduce it in a way that makes sure that the old stuff keeps working and we introduce new stuff for the new functionality. So we do it like this, right? You can also, w so what I meant on this last line is what if you just you maybe you don't even want to read the data, the secret from an environment file uh, variable. You can read it from a file instead, perhaps. So, there, therefore, to to m make sure that we can have variables in a config file, I here we introduce the concept of dash dash variable, and dash dash variable is only an option to add set variables on the command line and the uh, config file because command line and config files are basically interchangeable, so you can use them either or or in combination, right? So you can actually use multiple config files and mix them with command line options as well. So you can, you know, use a few options, a, a config file, a few options, another config file and, and so on. So there's just a set of options basically. And first, this is scheduled to ship in curl 8.3.0, which is um, targeted to be shipped in September of 2023. So if you're, uh, yeah, keep an eye on that because this won't then exist in earlier versions. So basically you set a curl variable on the command line or in a config file and a variable like this, you just set it a uh, name equals uh, or assign content to it. That's just, you know, <coughs> like you do it in any kind of context where you have variables. And uh, you can, uh, le that's the first version here is on the command line. The second one is how you do it in a config file, right? Basically, th it's very similar syntax and you can, if you, yeah, right. So you, you set a variable and that variable has a name and those, that's, a, uh, and the name is limited to how you set environment variable names, basically the same characters. So it's A to Z, it's basically an ASCII subset and uh, you can also use numbers and underscore, but as you see, no crazy characters, no uh, international characters, a, a bit limited, but it helps with keeping things simple. 
and they can be up to 128 characters long so you can have long descriptive names if you want to they are case sensitive so you can you know mix up a case and no case if you want to and you know <laughs> you can have almost the same name with different casing and they are different and if you use this if you assign the same name again as a with any um, well with most variable concepts if you set the same name again it will overwrite the content right and the second set will uh, the second assign will overwrite the first and there's really no limit to the number of variables right now well your system memory but um, th that should in most cases uh, cover quite a few variables and right now at least we have set a limit to 10 megabytes per variable there's no real reason why we couldn't have them larger but uh, right now you cannot uh, you cannot and it's m more of a way to limit mistakes or, or avoid abuse or something like that so I, I figured this could be a reason to maybe change in the future so and of course they're they're parsed in a left to right order exactly as it curl passes the command line and config file and the and all these variable parsing and handling that's done when the command line par uh, is parsed right exactly when you sort of hit enter when you start it so it's it's not done at any later point it's just you know everything is executed when it starts up the, the command line tool and you can um, also set variables with contents from a file so then you um, just says at file name so you could read it from well actually whatever file you want instead of just assign it on the command line which is also convenient if you have a, a huge file and you want it to into a variable or you can read that variable from standard input instead of from a file name you see it's starting to be a little bit more complicated now and of course variable content can then be binary right so you can read a binary file from from disk and you can keep that in a variable and hold that thought for a while because it's important because now it might be binary right and you might have a lot of weird character in there characters in there that might be challenging for you to use but okay i started th this and prefaced it by talking about um, uh, variables in config files right and how someone wanted uh, and i wanted an to use environment variables in a config file but so far i haven't showed you that i just showed setting you know private variables in the command line but you can also ask this, the system to import environment variables uh, into this system and if you do it like this variable with this percent name it will import that variable from the environment and it will actually fail if it, that variable doesn't exist so make sure that you don't accidentally get a blank or anything so um, do this and you will have that variable automatically within curl and if you if you rather want a default variable instead of failing if it doesn't exist you can set a default like i have an i want to import the environment variable called name but if it doesn't exist set it to default and then we can use it like a normal variable <coughs> and of course we can then use the same concept so we can get uh, we can import it from the environment and if it doesn't exist get the default from a file name or we can actually get it from standard in as well the same way we can set other variables so okay we can set variables to content right 10 megabytes a lot of variables we can set what what do we do with these variables we we need to expand them somewhere right to use them so we basically can expand them and use them as arguments to other command line options but we also need to tell curl that we want curl to expand the options so therefore we must explicitly ask for these variables to be used in options and we do this with this new dash dash expand prefix which is a little, bit a little bit of a magic prefix that you append to any existing command line option in curl and, and i'll show you it, it might sound a little bit difficult but it's really not so basically when you reference a variable or and you want to expand it you want to use it on the command line you you reference it as less this brace brace name of the variable open braces and close braces two of each before and 
at the end, like this, right? It's it's a, a quite straightforward and, and common way to reference variables. Uh, so nothing strange there. And it's, as I said, it's case sensitive. So the name has to have used the same case as the variable had when you assigned it. And if you reference a name that doesn't exist, um, it'll be a blank, right? It doesn't have any content because you haven't set the variable. It's not an error to reference a non-existing variable. Um, and, but here, trying to expand or show a variable that has a null byte included it'll cause an error because a command line cannot um, contain a, a null byte the zero octet so trying to use that in a command line like this expanding a variable that contains a null byte that will cause an error and curl will exit and say hey there's a uh, there's a problem here but i'll i'll show you um, in a second exactly how you typically would get around that but in most cases of course maybe you didn't intend that to happen so maybe it was just a bad command line so you have to fix your command line to not to avoid this maybe you read the wrong file you set it to the wrong content or something but but anyway so this is how you do it if you want to send data and you want to use a variable you use the dash dash expand data the, use the prefix to the to the um, option right exactly like that um, and it looks like, of course, <coughs> in, in a live terminal, you would then use, for example, I would set a variable called content, and that would be hello, right? Very useful content. <coughs> Maybe I should increase my... So here's a little bit bigger. Um, text so okay i set a variable called content to hello and to use that to to use the variable i can expand that and if i if i want to use that in for example the dash dash data option i use it like this and i pass it like the variable is called content like this so this is then uh, using the data option. So it's data that I'm sending in an HTTP post, right? So I can send it to, if I send it to my own server, I send it to localhost, and this was, will then do a, a um, HTTP post. I'm, I'm using, uh, let's, let's do like this. I can trace ASCII, it's like this. And I'm sending the output to dev null because I don't really care about what's sent back. So, okay. What did I do? I got a lot of... That's not exactly what I wanted, but uh, it doesn't matter. So, <coughs> we can see what happened. Uh, it sent... Uh, here, I want to show you from the beginning. So, here's the actual request that it did then. So it, it did a post because I used the, the data option and it s sent uh, the content hello. And why did it send? Because, where am I? You're right, because I set the content variable to hello and I used that content variable in the option. <coughs> and of course, I can use this variable in any option. I can, uh, if I want to set, you know, um, there's this, um, option called user agent that I can set to hello 2000 and if I do it like this um, and just hide the response uh, you can see that we can see that it set the user agent header here in the request to hello 2000 exactly what we told it to so if I use that <coughs> if I wanted to use a variable in the user agent, I could set a variable called agent foobar3000 and I could use expand user agent and in, in here I could then reference agent. And then we see that it sets the foobar. So uh, what I want to show you there is that the you can expand any option and ask for variable expansion just if you just prefix with 
expand and it'll work like that. So <coughs> um, you can then expand it, it like this and you can of, co of course expand it like this in multiple variables within the same argument. Just add all the uh, all the variable names uh, you want and of course you know other text that is not variables as well as, as usual. <coughs> and again it might be binary in the contents. If you read, a for example, if you assign a variable from the contents of a binary file, there will be binary content. And that might or might not be what you want. So let me just show you how to um, manage this. Uh, but of course, uh, you can also expand the variable option itself, right? So if you want to, for example, assign a variable um, uh, from the contents of another variable, you can expand the variable option itself like this if you want to var var1 equals var2 right so if you want to do i want a full name and include this is first name last name so you can set the two variables first the first name and the last variable variables and then assign the third name called full name based on the two first right it, it sounds more complicated and what it is it's just yeah you, so you can assign more you can assign variables based on the contents of other variables. Uh, of course, it's not that complicated, but it's, f I mean, it's, it's uh, convenient and handy because then you can play around with multiple variables in an easier way. And you can, of course, then uh, do it fancy. You can set a variable based on um, the contents of another like this. <coughs> but I, as I mentioned, um, when you use one of these variables, they might contain a binary zero, for example, that you cannot use in a command line or whatever. Uh, in, in typical cases, when, for example, when you read data from from a user, perhaps, or from a file, sometimes you get data. Uh, uh, let let me hold off and say that. So you might. Um, you can apply f a few functions when you expand a variable and I'll show you how this works. Basically, this is the sy syntax for that. You, you, you expand a variable like before brace, open brace is the name of the, of the variable, but here you add colon and a function and the function is a specific name. I'll show you. So you can actually alter how the variable is expanded or how it gets ex sort of used, shown. And you can do multiple functions in a left, left to right order. So you can do many functions. Uh, first the one then the second and the third and why is that cool i'll show you F for example you can if you get a variable and you want to use it in the command line but you want to trim off white space and by white space i mean leading uh, or, or trim it removing leading and trailing white spaces which is all those uh, tabs and, and and new lines vertical tabs and stuff you don't want them from the beginning or the end of the contents in the variable so you can then show them like this colon trim like here I, I highlighted it in um, <coughs> in the, in blue here so you can see that so this expands the path variable but it removes leading and trailing white space because that's un, uh, unusual to be had in a path so that helps you to to remove craft from from the variable when you use it it's pretty handy and one of the one uh, as you can see, sort of, we're while adding this feature to that adds variable functions to the config file, we also sort of took the opportunity to add more fancy stuff that helps you do more better curl command lines. And one of the problems that we often hear about, or people have ch sort of get a challenge to actually use in, in a good way, is to how do you get data into a command line and send it off as JSON in a convenient way. Because, you know, JSON wants the data uh, in a particular way, right? It should be quoted and it needs to be escaped in a proper way uh, to get sent as valid JSON. So how do you do that in a command line? Pretty uh, complicated. Usually you can get around it by some, some quirks or, or some funny workarounds and you accept that you have to sort of live with those workarounds. But um, here we have this function called JSON, and the JSON function will provide the data in a JSON format, escaped exactly uh, a 
according to Jason Rubes without the quotes but I'll show you an anyway how, how to use it so then you could do like this if you want to send JSON with curl and then you can ask you set the variables in this case we have two variables one called first one called last and that's apparently according to this example um, first name and last name right and <coughs> okay there's a, 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 a few sets of escapes here because that's how a shell would work right so you cannot use the the double quotes here are quotes for the sh re for a shell reason and then you have to, to include a double quote in this uh, <laughs> you would have them like back backspace double quote so anyway uh, so these two uses of the variables they use the function they both use the function json as in colon json there when it ex expands the variables and then they will be json uh, escaped uh, so if they for example contain a double quote if they contain white space if they contain binary stuff they will be escaped according to json rules so this will generate a fully valid json basically whatever these variables actually contain so a pretty convenient way to generate better and easy uh, easier generate better json and as I said before, you can also do multiple functions on, right? So you can, for example, if you if you fear that these variables contain white space in uh, leading or trailing white space, you can trim them and then convert it to JSON. Uh, possibly a, a pretty convenient combination. And if JSON is not what you want to do, maybe you just want to use it in a URL or send it some other way. You you probably would do it with URL encoding, for example. That's a very popular way, right? So with URL encoding, also what we often called percent encoding is you avoid, basically you just include letters that are fine to use within a URL. Basically A to Z and the numbers and a few other uh, characters, the rest are encoded as, you know, percent two digits hexadecimal number. and um, you could for example if you want to send you want to post data to a server here's the name again this is post data you want to send this to a server but you want the name to be url encoded because that's what the server expects right so you want it to be a url encoded like this and um that's that's then and uh, also th this also then w works uh, perfectly well for example when you have a again back to the binary content in a variable maybe you have a binary zero in there it a zero cannot be used in the command line uh, an octet zero hex zero but if you um, url uh, encode it it will be a percent zero zero and that's perfectly fine to have in the command line so it'll send it over so this you can send whatever binary data you want like this and it'll just convert it nicely to the proper format and again this uh, should be uh, simplify a lot of more complicated command lines because now you can ask curl itself to encode data to, to the way you want it and again maybe you have your name maybe it has leading white or trailing white space and you want to trim that off and then you can trim it and url encode it in the same sort of flow and again in the left to right order so this will trim it first and then url encode it doing it in the other order wouldn't make sense because there won't be any trailing or leading white space after you have URL encoded it. And the, the fourth function that we have now is one that is um, the popular, a popular way to send binary data in general over, over internet or over networks since a very long time is this called base64 encoding. Base64 well it doesn't say here. it's it's a way to encode any kind of binary data into just a, a set of letters there they are 64 different letters that's hence the name 64 so it converts the 8-bit data down to 6-bit uh, character set so it's a it's a way to gen uh, encode binary data into a very uh, printable set of characters and you can you can do this with curl and, and this uh, variable concept by 
simply by doing this, the B64 function, it allows you to, uh, in this case, we have the data function again, we want to send it in a post. So we uh, use the, the variable called value and you, we base64 encode it in the command line or, or into this option then content equals and the uh, base64 blob comes out. And again, uh, in a typical case, you might want to trim it first. In, if you don't want to have the leading and trailing white space, so then you can apply both functions. As you can see, m these functions are usually you want to just combine trim and one of the others, but you can also actually <laughs> combine the others if you if you want to do that base64 one and then encode it as a JSON, but I don't think you, that will do any difference. Anyway, that's completely possible. So this way you can do, um, you can really, really make more more advanced uses. You can do command config files that uses func uses environment variables, do these new variables, and when using these variables, you can expand them using functions uh, into encodings that really do what you need to accomplish your functionality. <coughs> and this, sure, I mean, in most cases, you can do all this in other ways already, and um, people have. And of course, if you're using a, a language or you're using libcurl binding, all of these functions are already available to you. But this is, uh, these are options and um, ways for you to pretty much make better command lines with curl to make sure that you can fulfill your, you can do more fancy command lines without doing bad workarounds or, or in uh, sort of uncomfortable workarounds, you know, how do you, because doing f things like URL encoding or base64 encoding, well, base64 encoding is pretty easy, at least on Linux, because there's a base64 command, but URL encoding on a command line, that's typically not very easy. So most scripts and command lines where you want those, you typically end up in a, in a, in a world where you do workarounds or half-baked solutions or something like that. But so this should ideally help you do better command lines without having to do half-baked solutions or workarounds. This should cover everything, right? Because this will do proper URL encoding, proper base64 encoding uh, and stuff like that. So if you want to read up more about what I've said here today, uh, this you can of course read the man page because I've already documented the dash dash variable is there. The documentation for the config file is limited in the man page, but you can read up on variables uh, and the config file of course in the everything curl book i encourage you to do that on this url you can find that section on variables it is i would say fairly complete it is basically what i've talked about today in a text format and of course this sh should and will be updated uh, accordingly going forward so uh, if we change things from what i've said today you can read it there and if you find anything tell me about it. I mean, something that doesn't work the way you want it to work, because this is early days, right? I merged this code the other day. I have a bunch of test cases. I have used it uh, a bunch myself. So I think it works pretty good, but I'm sure that there are some hidden gems in there that we need to polish off because before we can sort of consider this a really solid uh, feature. Um, so that is what I wanted to say. So uh, let me hear if there's anyone in the chat who has any questions or want anything clarified. I, I realized that I didn't, I didn't show many live demo things, but I think I covered most of what I wanted to say on, in the slides. <coughs> um, there, there are of course a few different use cases that I, I had in mind with these features, but it started out with that getting variables into the config files so that you can do more fancy config files to get variables. And then we got into these, yeah, you can use the variables much better. And then we got into this, oh, well, we can also import the environment variables and have default values for environment variables. And all of these features, I think, makes this a pretty nifty feature that I think can be 
can be really cool and, and helpful to make better command lines going forward. So I don't see any particular questions showing up right now. So I am going to s uh, just be happy with uh, this for, for now. Uh, again, if you find bugs, submit them. If you have questions, um, ask them on the, uh, in the forum. Uh, I mean, in the discussions on GitHub or on the mailing and curl users mailing lists. Um, so thank you for watching and uh, see you later. Bye.